December the 11th, 2020. As you're looking at an article on space weather, it came out yesterday, and they're talking about the CME that we were watching. It said uh, the storm is fizzled, but as predicted, a CME, which is pictured below, and this was on the 7th and coming from Lasco C3, it hit Earth's magnetic field during the early hours of December the 10th, 1.30 UT, UT, but the impact did not cause a geomagnetic storm. Mid-latitude uh, mid auroras are not likely tonight. Again, this was uh, yesterday's information. So what happened, and it's kind of unusual, and we are in grand solar minimum, I said that the science is going to be a little different and some new information. But uh, if you scroll down, it's got a little bit of information here. It says, why didn't the CME cause a storm? Every CME brings with it some magnetic field from the sun. It's a lot of magnetics uh, on the sun, and we're dealing with a switch in polarity of the solar flares because now we're in solar cycle 25, and that's how they know. Unusual that it, the way it did this, but it says if the magnetic field points south, it opens cracks in the Earth's magnetic field allowing solar wind to flow inside and fuel the auroras and the other things, tectonic pressure, everything else. On the other hand, if the CME's magnetic field points north, which in this case it was, it seals, cra it seals cracks in Earth's magnetic field, blocking the solar wind and quenching storms. In other words, same polarity. It wasn't out of phase. The CME brought a storm-killing north magnetic field. This CME brought a storm-killing north magnetic field. So even though the velocity of the solar wind in the CME's wake flirted with a high value of 600 kilometers per second, it was ineffective in causing a geomagnetic magnetic storm and auroras. It says maybe next time solar activity is picking up with the onset of new solar cycle 25. This is just the first of many CMEs likely to head our way in months ahead. And there's some new information also coming out. Check this out. This article is coming from Zero Hedge, and it's from NCAR, which is the National Center for Atmospheric Research. It says the digital economy disruption possible as the Terminator event suggests strongest sunspot cycle on record imminent. This Terminator event they're discovering, and it's new science here too, is that even though you have 11.8 year solar cycles, they can overlap at certain times and when they do you have this it says researchers at the national center for atmospheric research or ncar were forecasting the sun is about to wake up expected to hurl pulses of energy into space earth's implications could be dire as stormy space weather could be disastrous for the digital economy so you got to tie in the other effects too this one's about the economy and the digital uh, world and the cyber world NCAR's new paper, published in Solar Physics, entitled Overlapping Magnetic Activity Cycles and the Sunspot Number, it says for, is subtitled Forecasting Sunspot Cycle 25 Amplitude. Predicts Sunspot Cycle 25 could peak with a maximum sunspot number between 210 and 260 sunspots. This contradicts the official forecast by the Na uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA and NOAA, with, who both expect uh, sunspot cycle 25 to be as weak as cycle 24, which peaked around 160 sunspots. But what they're seeing now, and I can understand where both sides are coming from, because we are in a decline as far as the grand solar minimum, as far as, and that uh, has to do with how intense the solar cycles are during that 11.8 year period. And that is declining as far as the peak. But they're talking about an overlap here. It says, uh, if the NCAR forecast is correct, it will support the researchers' team theory that the sun has overlapping 22-year magnetic cycles that interact to produce the well-known approximately 11-year sunspot cycle as a byproduct. It's 11.8 years. 22-year cycles repeat like clockwork and could be a key to finally making accurate predictions of the timing and nature of sunspot cycles, as well as many of the effects they produce. It says, uh, using 140 years of solar observations, researchers were able to identify terminator events that signal the end of a sunspot cycle. They believe sunspot cycle 24 ended in the first half of 2020, 
with sunspot cycle uh, 25 beginning uh, beginning imminently, and I think it has. McIntosh believes the bright points, and this is dealing with the magnetic field that's in the northern hemisphere of the sun and the magnetic field that's in the southern hemisphere. When the sunspots change, they know the magnetic field of the sun, which changes with the sun uh, solar cycle, 11.8 years, unlike the Earth, which could take millions of years. Either Anyway, when they uh, change the mag magnetic field of the sunspot changes and that's what has happened and that's what uh, kind of absorbs some of that blow from the uh, CME that we're watching. McIntosh believes again the bright points which we're talking about on the chart below um, when they uh, when these field bands which wrap around the sun the bands from the northern and southern hemispheres which have oppositely charged magnetic fields when they meet at the equator they mutually annihilate one another leading to a terminator event like something totally out of phase where you have phase or wave cancellation guys it says these terminators are crucial markers on the sun's 22 year clock McIntosh says because they flag the end of a magnetic cycle along with its corresponding sunspot cycle and act as a trigger for the following magnetic cycle to begin and that's what we've seen we've been talking about that it goes on to say that NCAR's deputy director Scott McIntosh a solar physicist who led the study said evidence for terminators have been hidden in the observational record for more than a century but until now we didn't know what we were looking for by combining such a wide variety of observations over so many years we were able to piece together these events and provide an entirely new look at how the sun's interior drives into solar into the solar cycle exactly what we got you guys and i have been talking about for the last couple of years new things will be discovered new science new technology that we have now to look back and observe these things and correlate it uh, but anyway this goes back from 1760 to the current cycle now it doesn't include the uptick that we're going through now into 25 right here at the end of the chart but they're showing these peaks and they're showing some overlap and during that overlap period is when you're going to have the terminator events as they are calling them but i wanted to update it guys because as i said while we were watching the live video we don't know what will happen it is a new science and our shields are very weak and to me it was a blessing that the magnetic field pointing north in the cme matched the earth's magnetic field at that time and absorbed the blow our father knows what he's doing when the time comes he'll do what he has to do but we're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.